Welcome to the next training session of SAP FICO. Today's topic is accrued and de deferral process and the second one is recurring entries. Deferred and accrued process. An accrual is an expense that has not been paid or a revenue that has not yet been received. There could be two type of accruals. One is accrued ex revenues and another is accrued expenses. The other one is a deferral. A deferral basically delays the recognition of either an expense that has been paid or a revenue that has been collected. There could be deferred expenses and deferred revenues. So first moving on. Let's discuss further on this. What is all accrued and deferral process is all about? An accrual entry is passed when cost or revenues are accrued but not paid. Means they have been due but have not yet been paid. Financial statements are prepared under the accrual concepts of accounting which requires that income and expenses must be recognized in the accounting period to which they relates rather than on cash basis. So the financial statements are prepared as per whatever has happened first. The accrued again the accrued can be of two types one can be accrued revenue and another is accrued expense. Accrued revenue refers to Revenues for which a business has not received cash payment from the customer. That means a credit sale is recorded when a customer takes a delivery of the goods, not when he pays the invoice in cash. So if you have made a credit sale, that will be accountable for your accounting entries and on the basis of that, your financials will be prepared. So in this case, the accounting entry made is the account receivable that is the customer is debited and the sales account is credited. Once the company receives the cash payment, in that case the cash account gets debited and the account receivable is credited. But the major concern over here is that accrued revenue means if the revenue has been done but whether the the incoming payment has been received or not that is supposed to be accountable for the financial statement the very similar is accrued expenses where refers to those which a business has not yet made the cash payment a company incurs interest on for example a company incurs interest on outstanding bonds throughout the year but may make interest and principal payments semi-annually. That is an example of accrued expenses. The very similar example is, there could be many other examples of accrued revenues and accrued expenses. The bottom line of using the accrual and then do the reversal is, when you are not sure about the exact expenditure or income amount, but you do the posting, based on estimations which is known as provisions we need to do our provisional accounting because we need to book these expenses or revenues in the same financial statement this has to be reversed on the very next period but for that particular period in which it belongs to it needs to be booked in that period so we make provisions for accruals and those accruals are reversed on the very next period, on the first couple of days of the next period or next month. For example, a company is paying taxes quarterly to tax authorities. You can post accrual the taxes monthly, the estimated based on the tax paid last year for the same period because you don't know what will be the exact amount of tax but you can on the basis of your estimations you can put an accrual entry that is a provisional entry in the system so that your accounting could be very much correct and you will reverse those on the very next month 
you can do the same for the next two months or for the next half yearly depending upon the kind of an expenses which you would be taking up the accrual accounting principle is that you don't just reflect the expenses or revenues when the cash is settled but when the business activity is performed so it's a very important part now moving on to the deferral deferral entry is based on when the cost or revenue is still not accrued but due to unexpected cost or revenue is going to receive because of this period like deferred taxes deferred revenues and all again deferral are consequences of revenue recognition principle in accounting which dictates that revenues can be recognized in the period in which they occur and the matching principle which dictates expenses to be recognized in the period in which they are incurred again there could be a deferral expense or deferred revenue deferred expense is a kind of an expense where the cash has already been paid or the payment has already been made but all services have not yet been used it will be used in number of periods or even in the next year as well but the payment already is has been made like example of that is a very common example prepaid expenses a company purchases an insurance policy in which the first uh, we we always make the insurance premium payment for the whole year out of that maybe certain premium is related to the current year and certain premium amount relates to the next year payment so half of those payment is been taken up in the financial statement in the income statement as an expense in that particular year and the rest of the part which belongs to the next year has been taken up as a receivable in the asset side as insurance paid in advance the same way deferred revenue where the revenue has came came into the company but the event has not still been occurred and this is also known as unearned revenue for example a magazine company may receive money for one year subscription however the company has not spent the resources in producing and delivering those magazines thus the accounts record this as a liability because the money has been received in advance but the work which has to be done against that has not yet been done fully so whatever has not been done is a part of a liability and that is why it is taken up as a deferred or as an unearned revenue so this accrual and deferred is a very important part and accrual and this deferral concept is used for income and expenditure accounts as this is recognized when it is earned or incurred and not when cash is received or paid so to very much make the accounting very much correct we need to put various provisional entries for accruals and deferrals in the system so that the profits and losses can be calculated accurately in the quarterly financial statements moving on to sap we'll see how this accrual and deferral provisions are done so that the accounting can be correctly done every provision entry needs to be reversed when we book the actual cost in the next month so so we can have a simple practical example like salary is made sorry salary is paid to every employee at the end of the month but the actual amount is not known normally the salary is paid on the very next next third or fifth of the of the month and we don't know what is the exact amount of a salary which will be paid to the employees and in that case we make provisions in our accounting 
on a on an expected amount and once we know the actual amount uh, of amount of salary which has to be paid we make the actual posting in the system and we reverse that provisions which has been made so we'll be doing the same thing in the in the system we'll try to make certain provisional entries for accrued accrued and deferral processes and we'll see how these things can be done so there are certain entries which are very much fixed in the business which are known that these entries and the amount is fixed will be done in the business as a provisional entries like uh, uh, there could be insurance premium which has to be a uh, provisional entry for them has to be made at the end of the month and it will be reversed on the very second third or fourth of the month of, of the next month so these kind of a provisional entries can be done in a crude and deferral process where we make a provisional entry on the current month uh, last days last couple a uh, few days of the current month and we put a reversal date on the very next month beginning any of the three four or fifth of the month date can be put and the system in that case reverse that entry automatically uh, uh, that particular provisional entries in the system so this is very much helpful for organization because there are certain entries which are fixed which has to be done and can be reversed and you don't have to remember and have to go back again and again for them so how this can be done in the SAP system we'll check that so for that you don't need to do any customization or any kind of a configurations at all they are simple standard process provided by SAP that is we need to first create the provisional entry we need to create the provisional or the accrual and deferral document that is the accounting entry which we want to make as a provision and once the provision has been done we can reverse that provision with a different transaction code so first we'll be creating uh, an accrual entry now in the SAP system how can that be done so the transaction code for that is F B S 1 for creating uh, an accrual or deferred document so once we go on to this screen now over here you need to fill your details like the document date suppose I put the document date as uh, 29th October 2014 you can put the type like SA the company code 1200 29102014 and then the currency that is USD so once you do that again now you need to put the reversal reason as well because this is a provision entry uh, just to keep the current months accounting very much on the on the correct path so we put the reversal entry over here as 01 and reversal date as on which date you want to reverse the entry so I am booking the this particular provision amount on 29th of October and I want this to be reversed to be reversed on the next month that is 3rd of November 2014 now over here you need to select the entries now with 40 the GL account gets debited so which GL you want to debit with suppose I take any GL for the provisional entry just to take the transactions that how these things will move like uh, what we can take up as there is no expense account so let's do one thing create a, a special scenario uh, actual practical scenario which does happens in the organizations like a very common example is salary where we, we book a provisional entry on the end of the month for salary provision and when the actual amount is known we book the actual amount and then that entry has been reversed on the next month so for that we need a salary account and a salary payable account so that we can book the provisional entries so we need to create these two GL account with the transaction FS00 now let's check the ledger accounts the number which we can use in this 
So the salary account is a part of expense and the expense GL starts with 4. So we can use the number 400002. We can go to this new entries and now this is a part of expense balance profit and loss account take it as salary account then the same salary account you can go to the control data here you need to take the line item display only because profit and loss account you cannot select open item management for profit and loss account then next we can go to create bank interest in this if you remember for all the expenses I have said that the filled status group will remain G004 over here so this has been selected and you can save it your salary GL account has been created similarly we will be creating a salary payable account and salary payable account is a liability because it has to be paid. So a liability GL starts with the digit 2. So in this we can use 2000004. So let's create a liability over here 200004. We can go to new now we can create the description over here it's a part of liability so we need to select the liability then this is a part of balance it account we'll select the balance it account over here we'll be taking salary payable moving to the control account same thing line item display and we can select the open item management over here as well because when we reverse the entry the entries will get cleared to each other then going to create bank in this bank and interest the filled status group can be taken as G001 so this is what you need to take for salary account salary payable which is a part of a liability save it so now we have created this 2GL account and now we can take a practical case where provisional entries are always made at the end of the month for salary purposes. So depending upon the previous years of salary paid, we make a salary provisional entries in the system. So that could be two way outs either you put a manual entries and then go back and again reverse that entry in a different date or the another could now the way out could be this accrual and deferred where while posting the entry we put the reversal reason in it as well and on the very day in which we have to reverse it we just need to go and execute the transaction we don't have to put the data and have to fill it again and again no need of that so it is FBS1 enter take the date like I am taking the date of the last month of October just as a provisional entry and then I will be reversing that entry on the 3rd of November so now I will be debiting the salary account so that my my income statement will be very much correct so what I need to do is I need to debit the GL so to debit the GL I need to take the posting key 4040 now I have to debit the salary account because as a provisional entry which we make in that the salary accounts is debited and the salary payable accounts get credited so when we go and we select the salary account over here so we can select the salary account once we have selected the salary account click on to the enter button enter it will take you to the next screen enter again okay 01 is not permitted until later okay we can put 02 and now we can take so suppose the amount of salary which has to be paid is 
one lakh one twenty thousand US dollars. You can put the text salary provision for October 14. Now we can go and we can take the this is the debit part which you just taken debit entry over here. We need to take the credit entry as well. So for credit entry, we'll take the posting key 50 and the GL account which will be selected will be salary payable. So the salary payable account over here will be selected. Enter. It will take you to the next screen. Again, you need to select the credit amount over here. Text same. So this is what the entry we made, and now we can simulate this entry over here. So it's a normal entry which you used to do, but just the case over here is that over here we put the reversal reason as well, so that on the date on which the reversal has to be done on that day we just need to execute a transaction and the entry will be reversed automatically so now this is the entry which will be done and we can save this entry over here post and your accrual or the provisional entries will be done so the business area has not been filled in the line item 01 so line item 01 is this upper one so we need to put the business area first in this more so assign the business area now we can again go to simulate and now we can post the document over here so the document number has been posted so once the document has been posted on 29th of October that is the provisions have been done and now I want to reverse the provision on 3rd of November so for reversing the particular provision we need to go to the transaction f.81 so for f.81 now if you execute enter now over here you need to put the company code 100 you need to put the year You need to you can okay no problem execute it so once you execute you will find the document numbers over here so if you don't remember much that's not a problem you can put the company code you can put the fiscal year and then you can execute the transaction it is always been executed in a test run just for the checking purpose and everything things are confirmed and okay then we tick this uh, test run out and we execute so we can execute it now and we can have that there is only one document which has been processed as, as a provision so that is what this is over here you can see document number has been reflected over here this is it so if there will be multiple provisional entries that all will be reflected to over here in this screen to you all document number will be reflected over here to you so whichever you want to reverse you can keep the cursor on that particular document and you can go back and you can reverse on with this reversal document option so let's reverse this document reverse this provision for that we need to take this test run off and then we need to execute this so let's execute now we can put the cursor on this okay and now when you put the cursor on that you can see reversed with document 14 so once you click on this the document get reversed so number of document reversed is 1 so you can you can see over here that the option over here reflecting to you that the reversed with the document 1000014 so the provision entry was made with 13 and the reversal entry has been made with 14 if you want to see this document 14 we can even have a look to that as well so you can go back and you can check this entry 
with slash o fb03 for enter you can see now the reversal entry over here the entry has been reversed against the original entry you can go over here to the header and you can see the transaction the transaction is fb08 that is the replica of f.81 so this is how the document get reversed in the system and this is how you need to follow the accrual or deferred process for your system for putting all the provisional entries in the system as a part of it. So that is all about the accrual and deferred, deferral documents. Let's move to the next topic that is recurring entries. Recurring entries, business transactions in financial accounting that are repeated regularly again and again such as rent, insurance, premium etc. A template can be maintained for entries that are frequently passed each month. Now moving on to ahead a recording entries are the entries or the transactions which happen in any organization on a regular basis where the same entry with the same amount has to be processed each and every month and for that the accountants need to go back to the bank account to search for the GL account then the amount interest and a lot of things and he has to manually process each and every month and has to find those details again and again so that is what a recurring entry is all about where the amount are fixed and the, pro the accounting entries has to be processed again and again. Now in SAP some business transactions are repeated regularly every period or quarter such as rent, insurance, royalties. SAP gives the recurring entry option to make this entry one time and run it every period and have the same financial effect. Recording entries in the system are only a reference document and has no accounting impact. So what SAP provides is we can create a reference document which is known as a template and that same template can be used again and again whenever it can it is needed for every month postings where in the template your debit and credit entries your loan number your amount everything will already be there you just need to change the date and you can post that particular recurring entries like take a practical scenario suppose there are 10 different accountants in a company they need to pay recurring payments such as interest payment, royalty payment, rent, insurance premium etc. whose amount is fixed and which has to be paid on a fixed date of the month. With recurring entry set up all your recurring payments can be configured to run it automatically and the same thing which is done by 10 accountants now can be managed with one accountant itself. All your accountants do not need to remember all those payments because all those payments a template can be made against that. With recurring entry set up all your recurring payments can be processed or configured automatically. They can use the recurring entry configurations where they need to give the payment date amount so the system will go ahead and run all those entries on the selected dates. As a one-time activity the entry can be maintained and the same entry can be recalled each month and the entry can be posted in the SAP system. 
So it is all about a template that can be maintained for entries that are frequently passed each month or quarterly. Such entries are basically termed as recurring entries in the SAP system. So we'll be creating the recurring entries in the system and we'll see how that can be done. <laughs> So the different transactions which is to be done for the recurring entries. Now there is no configurations involved in the recurring entry part. It is a standard process which is provided by the SAP itself where the steps are as ahead. There are different transactions which can be used. The very first is to create a recurring entry with the help of which we can create a template and in case in the future any changes are needed, those changes can be done in the template with the second transaction that is FBD2. The same document can be reviewed or can be displayed with the transaction FBD3. FBD4 is for the display changes which has already been taken place by in the system in that particular document. F.14 is to execute the recurring entry. SM35 for running the batch input session and for evaluating the recurring entry documents that is F.15. Now moving to the very first transaction that is to create the recurring entry. Let's move on to the system. The first transaction to create the entry is FBD1. Enter. So once you enter you can see the screen enter recurring entry. In this, what you need to do is first of all, you need to put your company code over here that is 1200. Now, over here, we need to put the first run date and the last run date. The first run date means the date from which the first recurring entry is to be carried out, the last run date means the date until which the final rec recurring entry is to be carried out. Now in this you can have whatever the amount or the period you know that you have to pay for the recurring entries you can take that much of amount or a gap like for example if you know that the rent you, you, you will be paying would be maybe for two years so you can put the two years of calculation over here as a first run and the last run. For example, suppose I take as 01112014 till 01102015 for 11 months. So I know that this is the rent which I have to pay from this to this date and if there is anything else which you know that from an uh, last run date like for insurance premium there the the last run date could be much more larger than this so you can calculate and you can put that last run date on the system so the system will will take this uh, calculations month on month or quarterly basis as you want till that particular last run date so you need to first take the first run date then the last run date now the next is to interval in month so in this you can you can have a look now over here you to decide the date up to until which the final recurring entry is to be carried out. So over here you can decide that whether the recurring entries which will be done will be done monthly, two monthly, quarterly or how. So suppose I pay the rent monthly so I will be taking the per month over here. So these are the three things which you have to take over here. The next thing you need to take is the next thing you need to take is the document type. So in the document type we take SA because we are going for a for a GL to GL posting. So SA will be taken as a document type. Otherwise, if you are going for a recurring entry with relation to a vendor, then in that case you would be taking K, KA or something else in that. Moving to the next is the currency that is USD. Now once we have done this we will be making the entry over here. Posting key. The posting key will be 41st to for debit and 50 for crediting something else. 
So suppose I take the 40 and I need to select the jail over here. What reckoning entry I would be making up? So as of now, we can see that there are only three GL account for expenses which are there in it. So what we can do is we can create one GL account for expense for rent as well. Go to the new session. FS00. Expense, profit and loss, rent, rent account, control data. We have to select the line item display over here. Moving next, the field status group for expense will be G004. Save it. Okay. So every month I will be paying a rent. So the entry for the rent will be the rent GL will be debited and the bank GL probably would be credited. So with 40 posting key I will be taking rent because 40 posting key is for debit GL. The GL which you want to debit. So we will be selecting the rent GL over here. That is it. You have taken the rent over here. Now you have filled this first page then what we have to do is to enter the screen it will take you to the next so there is a number range problem the number range is missing x1 we need to go to the transaction code slash o f b n 1 with which we create the number range if you remember we did this in gl ar and ap as well so we need to take the company code over here then we go to this uh, change interval over here we'll be adding the number range x1 as mentioned over there x1 year 2014 and the number range we can define over here could be suppose 2900999 added Created. so no problem now going back again I can now enter the screen and it will take me to the next screen so you can see it takes me to the next screen over here we need to put the amount of rent which I would be paying suppose I am paying for around four thousand dollars so we'll be putting up over here as four thousand dollar you can go to this more transaction for putting the business area so over here we need to take the business area as well now moving next you can write the text over here rent paid for month November 14 now over here you need to take the 50 posting key which will be credited so the now I am making the payment with the bank so I will be selecting bank for the credit part So suppose I take the bank over here on the credit part as outgoing bank that is city bank has been selected enter select the amount $4,000 business area and the value date the value date would be hmm, so this is what you need to take now we have filled the debit and the credit part and we have taken the first run date and the last run date that is what is important in the interval on which this particular template need to be processed has to be taken that's what we have taken as well so now we can go to the simulate the document from this tab over here so you can see the the preview of the document over here 
and if you find this to be okay you can go and you can post it over here so once you post you find the document number has been generated 9009000 now this document number doesn't means that it post any value to the account it doesn't post any value to the gl or to the account at all this is that is why i just said that this is just a template it doesn't updates the values or it doesn't hit the value in any of the gl accounts anywhere else this is just a template and on the basis of this template we can post the transactions on month to month basis without doing the repetitive work again and again so now we have completed the first step that is we have just created the recording entry that is the template for the document now we'll be moving to the next that is to display the document that is fbd3 so we can go back over here slash n fbd3 to display this particular recording entry has been seen so you can see the transaction display the recording entry enter you can see the recording entry which we we just posted in the last part is over here on the screen and in case you want any changes to be done you can go to the transaction slash n fbd2 so as to change but mind it you cannot change all of those things what you can change is you can double click on to the rent or any of the line item and you can change these things over here if you want you can change the amount as well so it does happens at times that maybe there could be a small amount of fluctuation in the amount in case of royalties or in case of uh, uh, maybe something else uh, maybe insurance or something so in that case even you can go back and you can you can use the same template and you can change the amount and change the text as well like i would be paying the rent in the next month so i would be come back to this particular template i will be changing this text over here from november to december so when i will be paying the december month rent so i can make those changes over here and then i can save that particular document and then i can process that for the for the business transaction postings so that is what can be done so this is how you need to create the recurring entry and this is how you can change the recurring entry with fbd2 where you can change anything in it any you can change the amount cost centers business areas text anything in it because this is a template and tem in template anything can changes can be done even if you want you can add further things into it into a, it as well now moving to the next is now how would be we would be posting this particular in the sap system so to post the transaction in the sap system now we need to go to the transaction code f.14 so when you go to execute f.14 so that we can post transactions into the system f.1414 executing so over here we need to enter the document number and the period for which the recurring entry needs to be generated the session name can be entered manually for easy identification so over here we need to put the company code 1200 we need to put the fiscal year 12 or 2014 and now in this case over here we need to put the settlement period for which period you want this particular entry to be done or the transactions to be posted so suppose i am doing this for the month of uh, november i would be putting the month of november over or uh, uh, i think i did it for november or october okay november 30112014 and then moving to the next the most important part you need to put the document number over here so if you don't know the document number how can we get it you need to search that and then only you can put it over here so right now it is 900000 as we know and this is what you must have to remember it mind it so if you don't know you can go back over here you can search and you can put it over here so now once this has been done you can go for processing it so you can go on execute option over here once you execute this 
your uh, transactions will get posted uh, a batch will be created so executing the transaction now will generate a batch input session a batch input session gets created so now executing this and you can see over here session SAP F120 was created this is a batch input session which is which gets created that needs to be further processed so the session which is created at this footnote over here needs to be further processed either in the foreground or the background so as to so as to check that there is no error in the processing of the transaction if processed in the foreground each line item screen will come up and it is possible to change the values during the posting as well so let's move on to process this particular batch input session in the system so for that you need to go to the transaction code SAP SM35 that is the next transaction running batch input session SM35 so moving to the transaction slash in SM3535 enter now once you enter you can see you can find your session on the top of the list you must remember your session name so what so we have selected this and now we can go to process and this process we can select the first option that is foreground so that the screen will keep in front of us and in case we want to make any changes anywhere we can even make the changes in them so click on to the process and now you can see the screen so you can see the screen over here this is the first screen where the first run date is there now you can put the posting date is there and the doc the jail number is coming up over there enter it will take you to this next screen that is the 40 amount and the 50 means the credit jail that is the bank jail enter it takes you to the next enter keep entering so that the system take you to the next step so you can see now that the system over here the message comes is processing of batch input session is completed so once you get this message without any error it means your document has been posted successfully by the system so if you want to see the overview you can click on to the session overview so once you click on to the session overview you will find that the document that your session is no more uh, reflecting on the screen because the document has been posted in the system so this is how your recurring entries po uh, get posted into the system and in case you want to see that what was the recurring entry document number which took place or got posted into the system we need to go to the general ledger account that is the GL ledger account with the transaction FBL 3N so in this you need to select your GL for which you want to check so I just processed my recurring entry for rent account so click on to the rent account and now I can execute it and we can see the document has been posted to the rent account the document is 1000015 the business area is this and this and the rent paid for the month of November has been mentioned over here so this is how the things move and now the next payment run next recurring entry run which we will be doing it will be on 1st of December for the next month run so this is how your recurring entry is done you can do these kind of a recurring entry templates can be created so as to save, take, uh, save a lot of time and manpower for any organization and on the basis of this template you can process it faster and even even it can be automated so that the system can automatically generate and post the transaction if there is no changes but we always prefer to run it in in front of us so that we can check back at once that everything processed is correct